that you can. Hi, folks. All right, so I am sitting on the ground to get a better angle on the camera, and Reverend Mike Bales is sitting down beside me today. We are doing a talk on dragon magic. Mainly, I'm just interviewing him because he's the one who's the expert on it. How long have you been practicing dragon magic? 94, 95. Since, since 95. <laughs> yeah, toddler and difficulties upstairs, right? Yay. Anyway, I may have to cut out of here early, but Dennis is going to be on along with Mike, which will get really dangerous because that's two air signs, not just one. <laughs> this could go a really yeah. long time tonight. Anyway, so I'm Alicia with Tuesday Night Talks brought to you from Des Moines New Age Shop, and this is Mr. Mike Bales. Reverend Mike Bales, we already have a watcher. Yo, Mike. So that's right. Since calling you didn't work, you're down in my basement. You know, what's up? Whoa. Christina Whitley. Hi. Hi, Christina. So, yeah. All right, Mike. Ooh, Dina Pullman Anderson says hi. Hello. So, we're going to try and put this a little bit further up so you can see more of us. And then there's Dennis in the background. And he's got his hoodie on because it's cold as balls down here. That's right. I just said cold as balls. Anyway. Yes. <clears throat> I guess we're going to have the explicit label on this one. Yo! I already made sure on YouTube it wasn't it wasn't meant for kids. All right, so Mike, what is dragon magic? Dragon magic. Okay. That is a <laughs> universal question. You look like a stalker back there. Quit looking like a stalker. Basically, and <laughs> dragon magic is a magical system where you work and co-create and use dragons to help you co-create. Uh, magical <clears throat> endeavors. Okay. Um, about 1995-ish, DJ Conway came out with her first book, Dancing with Dragons. No, no, Michael, you're, you guys are going to get cozy. Yeah, you're, we're That's gonna, why I'm sitting back here. We're going to have to be like, I'm He's getting my books hey, up in each other's space. Books, so I can just hand them to you. DJ Conway's first book. Dancing with Dragons. Dancing with Dragons. This is uh, a good book to start with. Mm -hmm. um, let me get something perfectly straight here right now. Dragons and working with dragon magic. Um, you have to... <laughs> He's trying to be serious here, honey. I'm really trying hard. Yeah, okay. no, you're not. Some people say you can learn <coughs> dragon magic through the books. I say no. If you have a connection with dragons, and if a dragon has chosen you, then they can take you and teach you all you need to know. Okay. So there are some people that have been chosen by dragons, and they have dragons for their spirit guides. They have dragons for their uh, guardians. Mm -hmm. Um, so my book is not the only method. Judy Zeitz. Hey, Judy. No, and honestly, <clears throat> books are a wonderful resource, but I really do prefer the one-on-one -on -one um, one, yeah. process. You know, you get a lot more. Uh, but the books are good uh, for information and resources. Yeah. Even if you have a dragon that has chosen you, uh, getting the books and reading the books will help you be able to communicate with the dragons better. Because it is very seldom that a dragon is going to talk to you and give you a straight answer. They like talking in riddles, rhymes, and uh, avoiding giving you a straight answer at any all costs. Why do you feel that is, Mike? It's their nature. Dennis, seriously, you're throwing off my son right now. You're throwing off my interview game so hard. Oh uh, my god. My, if I was to guess... <laughs> My guess is because they generally want you to figure it out for yourself. Yeah, one moment. They'll have, they have no problem teaching you, but they want you. You have to prove to them. Okay, we're good. Very good. Anyway. So, you have to prove to them that you're worthy. Uh, you have to, and working with dragons, you cannot doubt oh, yourself. Jesus. You cannot doubt your skills. You cannot doubt your abilities. You have to have self-confidence. And, uh, on the side, it's a little TV. <laughs> Other side. So, 
And if you run into magical area, Wicca, paganism, or whatever, very much, one of the first rules is know thyself. And how long would you say it takes somebody to know themselves? That depends on the person. Lifetimes. That depends on the person. You're only showing the cheek. Uh, because there's a group of gay people yeah, over here. I know there is. <clears throat> there's, there's also two Christians over here. Stand up. Okay. Anyway. So. Yeah. yeah. Sit. Sitting. Anyway. Okay. So. Mike. <laughs> I'm adjust it here. Um. How long ago did Dragon Magic come about? I mean, I know DJ Conway just brought up the books, but there is also a Lebanese faction of Dragon There's, Magic. Oh, I mean, Dragon Magic's been around for centuries. Okay. Um, I've heard it said that it is one of the oldest forms of is. magic. It's one of the oldest forms of magic. It is also um, a unique system. Mm -hmm. uh, most people that deal with Wicca deal with air, fire, water, and earth alone. Elementals. Mm -hmm. um, in dragon magic, you do multi-dimensional. Right. Okay. Because the dragons are able to trans transfer or tr transcend different dimensions. Now, what is your view on dragon magic versus having dragon spirit guides? I mean, is it possible for somebody to just work with dragons without dealing with the magical aspect of it? Can they separate out the two? They can if they want. Okay. How would you say one would go about working with dragon spirit guides? The way you would work in the, with any other spirit guide. You mm -hmm. have to get to know them and be able to start a communication and a relationship with them. Now, I have found that the dragon spirit guides are a little bit more spunky. Their energy is unmistakable. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you start working with... If you, get a, <laughs> if you get a dragon to start training you... Okay. Uh, they have a warped sense of humor. Eh. Most people match at that point. You might uh, do something wrong and feel like you got hit by a brick wall. Okay. And then you can look around and the dragon, if you can see astral sight, you'll see the dragon over there laughing and you'll notice that his tail is now wound up again. Okay. He just got tail slapped. I see. I see. Um, now, is there a difference when working with dragon spirit guides between eastern dragons, western dragons, things like that? <laughs> there are <coughs> uh, many, many different types of dragons. Okay. The eastern dragons, uh, like the Chinese dragons, are long and slender, and that's explained in the first book of D.J. Conway of all the different types of dragons. Mm -hmm. um, you have the Chinese dragons with four fingers, okay. which is known as the Chinese dragon. Okay. And then the one with five fingers is known as the, uh, I want to say royal, or the emperor, empress dragon, okay. imperial dragons. Now, what about celestial dragons? I've heard a little bit about those guys. They seem to be a little bit more standoffish. They are. Why? A lot of your dragon, well, first off, look at what uh, mankind has tried to do to dragons all throughout the centuries. That's very they true. tried to hunt them, they tried to kill them, they tried to mutilate them, they tried to take their blood, they tried to take their skin, they tried to take their organs. Um, some for magical purposes, some for medical purposes, and some just as trophies. I was going to say, seriously, though, that's like everything on the planet everywhere. People even hunt other people for this stuff. I mean, seriously. Not legally. Not legally. Not legally, mm -hmm. but... So, since dragons are a magical creature, mm -hmm. they decided... And also, dragons have been uh, watching over mankind since the beginning of time. Okay. And why? Because they're protectors. Nice. Wait, we have great big, scaly, fire, fire-breathing reptiles as protectors. Uh -huh. I just think they all breathe mm -hmm. fire. Well, you know. So they all have different breath weapons mm -hmm. depending on their, their style and type, but. Uh, because of that, um, they will have decided they'll go ahead and transcend to the astral plane or to other dimensions mm -hmm. and leave the physical realm. Right. 
periodically they will show up to some people in the physical realm where they can actually feel and touch them. Okay. But I know a couple people in my past that I ran into that actually had earth dragons come up. Oh, wow. And nice. deal with them and face to face. Okay. Um, another thing about a dragon that uh, I have been influenced by is that a dragon knows their power. Okay. And they know their capabilities. And they will do anything and everything they can to be as peaceful as possible until you put them in a corner. Once you back them in a corner, all bets are off. The only exception to this is if you they see somebody who they love, a family member or a friend, or some or their charge in danger. Right. And then they will do anything and everything and use all their powers and abilities to protect that person. Okay. Now, I, I know you've worked with a few different dragons. Um, personal guardian dragon. Mm -hmm. We'll start there. What, tell me a little bit about what working with one of those is like. Normally your guardian dragons are younger dragons. Okay. And they are giving a charge, like a child, they'll, t they'll, they'll be given the charge of a child to protect. Yeah. And they'll, since they're a young, young one, young one themselves, they will be playful and yeah, okay, and can get into a lot of mischief. Oh uh, my, <laughs> okay. So, <coughs> um, now what about your celestial dragons? Tell me a little bit about those. Celestial dragons are your more, um, I want to say ancient dragons. Okay. Um, there are many of the celestial dragons that are part of the Draconian Council, the Dragon Council. Okay. Uh, they provide the wisdom and guidance to the dragon kind. Okay. You have royal dragons. Uh, you have different families of dragons. You have a complete hierarchy of dragons. Okay. Um, and this is where they get have. This is why they have the Draconian Council. They meet and they try to discuss things that are going on in the world of man, as well as in the metaphysical realm, and discuss what can that be done or what their objectives are. Okay. Um, now, does each species of dragon have a different council, or do they all convene together? So the Eastern they have and Western. Their, they have a joint council and they all have their individual councils. Okay. Okay. Is there a particular reason why someone might get a Western versus versus an Eastern? Oh. That could be the, the, the attorney factor just depends on the dragons. Okay. Um like I said, some people that don't have a dragon as a spirit guide mm -hmm. or a, a guardian or anything. When they start getting into dragon magic, they are they are watched by the okay. councils, and then Aaron LaBelle. Hi, Aaron. As they're practicing through the book and stuff, mm -hmm. a dragon may come up and choose them, okay. see some potential, and decide, okay, I'll work with this one. Okay. And then when that happens. In your dreams, you'll start seeing dragons, or you'll see a glimpse of something on the corner of your eye. <laughs> okay. And that clues you that something's going on. Right. And then normally it happens that in a dream or in a meditation, you'll get uh, the information that you have been chosen by a dragon. Okay. You'll not ask the dragon's name right away because he will not give it. Okay. I should say he or she will not give it. There okay. are I was going to say. Um, okay, so boils down to what is it like working with dragon magic versus other forms of magic? What would you say is the defining difference besides working with dragons, obviously, but what is the difference in the feel of the magic? What is the difference between a, a candle mm -hmm. 
and a nuclear explosion. Right. Okay. What is the difference between a candle flame and a volcano? Okay. Sorry, I've got a cough drop in my mouth. The other Sorry, way I was saying it's what crunchy. is the difference? What is the difference between a candle and a supernova? So, how long would you say it would take to master dragon magic, or at least become an intermediate at it, from when you start? You've been doing this since 94 or 95, it's 2020, so, I mean, it's a long time. Each person will develop their own pace, mm -hmm. depending on who, on which dragon chooses them, and how, their, and how their um, training goes. How their confidence goes okay. and it all depends on the person okay. some people to get to be an adept at that dragon match it can take maybe two to five years okay. some may take 20 years some may take a lifetime okay. some may take several lifetimes it just depends on the person and what the training is now out of curiosity do you have a mentor or counsel people in this area Teach dragon magic. I normally try to teach uh, basic with the first, mm -hmm. and then if somebody comes to me and talks to me about it, and we discuss it, then if I have a good feeling about it, then yes, I will. Right. If I don't have a good feeling, then I won't. And that's another question that rolls me right into my next one: Is dragon magic for everybody? No. No. Okay. What are the key points you would say <clears throat> would be essential for somebody besides knowing themselves? What would be essential in beginning this path? Tanya! Hey, Tanya! What's hey, up? Tanya. You have to um, <clears throat> know yourself. You have to know your abilities. You have to be confident in your abilities. Okay. You have to know in your heart that this is where your path lies. You will be tested every step of the way. The dragons will constantly test you. Okay. <laughs> so, <clears throat> it is not an easy Testing path. sucks. Uh, yeah, it, yeah, does. it does. <laughs> yeah. um, Just like water. <laughs> like I said, DJ Conway has one book called Dancing with Dragons. Oh, it's been about 10 years. And she put out her second book. Mystical Dragon Magic. Teachings and of the Five and this Rings. This here has, it goes to the five rings that the dragons taught her. Mm -hmm. And each of the rings is a stage. And this book, to complete that book, can take um, between six months and a year to two mm -hmm. years. Okay. To go through and do the meditations, the practices, and all the... Now... Skills that it teaches you. Are there any churches or anything that can help with teaching of the dragon magic? I mean, you know, some of the older religions and older faiths and older mystical traditions, it's really difficult because there really is no gathering place. Um, is there anything like this, even online? Years ago, there was... Um, a couple of pagan witch Wiccan churches that were trying to culminate the different paths and stuff mm -hmm. and have teaching in them and stuff. Some covens will teach it. Okay. Um, if you can find one. a coven that will actually teach dragon magic as one of their paths, elect <laughs> elective paths. Um, have you ever thought about setting up a church yourself, even online? Many, many years ago, in 97, when I came back to Iowa, yeah, I was thinking about that. <laughs> but that's been a long time. Okay. Um, would you ever consider doing something like that? And if so, what would be what would be the catalyst for you to do something like that? If I had some serious students that wanted to start a group, okay. um, and follow my roles okay. in teaching because in basic Wicca what people don't understand they want somebody to teach them 
If you know the Wicca read and the rule of three, every energy, all the energy you put out will come back to you threefold. Right. If you're a teacher mm -hmm. and you're responsible for that student, mm -hmm. the student will get threefold. The teacher gets ninefold. Mm -hmm. So it is very important that when you have somebody teaching you, you listen to what they tell you. Unfun position. Huh? Unfun position. It's an unfun position because mm -hmm. they, a lot of students don't realize, well, I can do this because, you know, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're being taught and the you go against the teacher's rules or you go do something wrong, since he's responsible for your training, you'll get the threefold back from your energy, but he's going to get a ninefold whack because of yeah. your disobedience. No. I guess, I'm just curious, when you do your readings, because I know you do tarot and rune mm -hmm. readings and things like that, and when you do your spiritual counseling and your entity clearing and all this other stuff that you do, do the dragons help you? Or are they more consultative? Consultory? What, what is that word? Depends on counseling. Counseling? It's, it all depends on the energies I feel. Okay. If I need their help, I'll call them. If I don't need their help, I won't call them. Okay. Uh, there are uh, several dragons that are around me a lot of the time. Right. And they normally kick in what they want whenever they want to help out. But okay. there again, that's because of the symbiotic relationship we have between me and them. Okay. Um, but yeah. when I do my root readings and stuff, I normally just try to bounce to the Akasha records from the source and get what I can out of there. Okay. Um, how did you get into dragon magic? I mean, I know you've walked a lot of different paths, but uh, how did you get into this? Do you really want to hear the story? Oh, Dennis McCullough. What is more powerful, a Welsh green or a Norwegian Ridgeback dragon? <laughs> really, Dennis? Really? A Welsh green or oh. Norwegian Ridgeback. Ridgeback? Mm -hmm. I think those are Harry Potter terms. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. 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 Yeah. yeah. I wasn't, I? I wasn't sure, maybe Hungarian horn tail. I don't, you know. Anyway. I think that if you look at them, they're both pretty well equal. Okay. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> one maybe have a different skill than the other, but most dragons are pretty well equal. Right. Yeah. So, uh, another quick question. The different types of dragons, do they specialize in different kinds of magic or different philosophies? Just as, okay, in Wicca you have your elements, air, fire, water, and earth. Mm -hmm. You have a king that deals with air elements, you have a king that deals with the fire elements, king for the water elements, and a king for the earth elements. Mm -hmm. You also have the archangels, okay. and you also have a dragon lord okay. that deal with all the... Um, Wait, Archangel elements. Dragons or Archangel huh? Angels or where are we going with that? You have like Gabe, oh, I think Mikael deals with fire. Yeah. Okay. Um, if I remember right. But you have uh, Cirrus, who is the Dragon Lord of Air. Okay. That makes sense. Fafnir, who is the Dragon Lord of uh, Fire. Neron, who is the Dragon Lord of Water. Okay. And Grail, who is the Dragon Lord of Earth. Okay. So you have the earth elements, the dragons are the earth elements. Right. Then you have your astral dragons, you have your celestial dragons, okay. you have dragons of light, dragons of dark, and the ones that you really don't want to mess with unless you've been in dragon magic for a while is the chaos dragons. Right, I had heard about those. What about your black dragons? What sets those apart? What about the lawful dragons? No. You have black and white. Light okay. and dark. Light and dark. Okay. Same concept. But black dragons are not necessarily evil. They're not necessarily evil. There's no such thing as good and evil as a combination of gray. If, if when you're working with dragons, there is no positive uh, white and positive black. Okay. Everything's a shade of gray. Okay. Now that's good to know. So it all depends on your intent. Okay. And what you want to do. Okay. 
Now, again, rolling back around to the original question. <clears throat> How did you get into this? I mean, this is not something you just kind of trip over and happen upon. You really don't want to go there. Oh, okay. This um, sounds like a juicy story. Let's go there. No, seriously. Okay. Look, I have to mind the depths for ratings. Ratings, okay? It's either that or naked dancing chicks. And I don't have the money for those. Why yeah, you're right here. Aw. 1984. Okay. Wow, 10 years before you got into it. 1984. Okay. I went to NCAA Research School at uh, Shre uh, Shreveport, Louisiana. Okay. 8th Air Force and Civil Leadership School. I learned how to play Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. I had to leave early because my grandmother died and I went to go had to go to her funeral. Oh my gosh. Uh, a month or so later, I think it was in March of 84, okay. um, there was a Dungeon and Dragon tournament at right. the base rec center. Okay. Tournament? Yeah. <coughs> you go there and you play and see how long you can stay in before okay. your character gets killed. And, uh... Yes, but also d and Yeah, I'm not surprised by that. So, the... Got there, set up, and watched a few, watched a few other people come in and stuff. And then this one female came in, um, and the energy I got was that I knew her. Mm -hmm. And there was something familiar about it, but I'd never seen it before in my life. So yeah. my character got killed pretty much fairly within. I say within an hour and a half, we got I got killed. Hmm. About twenty of us got killed. Okay. And I was packing my stuff up to leave, and she, uh, the DM, looked at me and says, "You wait outside. I want to talk to you." Okay. So I waited outside. She finally came out and talked to me. Mm -hmm. I introduced herself. Her name was Helene. Mm -hmm. Um, and she said that her and a couple of her friends get together. On, on the weekends and play Dungeons Dragons. She wanted to know if I wanted to come over and level up a character so that I would be able to last longer. Okay. I said yes. So it was set up for that next Saturday. That See, D&D would... can lead you to interesting places. Oh, yeah. Yes, it's of the devil. It's... No, it's not. Oh, my God. Anyway. I started playing D&D &D in the military as well. So. The, uh, really? Yeah. I got there about half an hour early from when we were supposed to start. And walked up and talked to her a little bit, and Helene made a comment that I'm a witch. And it's like, you're what? <laughs> I'm a witch. <clears throat> really? Yeah, I come in inside, I'll prove it to you. Oh, boy. Okay. So we went inside, sat on the floor, and she said, I'm going to go inside your head. I'm going to pull out something that only you will know. Okay. And so she went inside, and I felt a little tingling on the top of my head. Mm -hmm. had a crown chakra. And about five minutes later, she came out and said, you almost drowned when you were eight years old. Okay. <laughs> now, is that true? Yes. Okay. Because at, when I was eight years old, my grandfather took me to the Jewish Community Center. Okay. Wait, are west, you Jewish? No. Okay. On the west side of town. It was a center that, we, that they had a pool. Okay. And it was close to where he was living, so we went there, and I went swimming. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was swimming laps, and I was swam so hard that I wasn't watching where I was going. I ran head first into the wall. Oh, gosh. The lifeguard pulled me out, resuscitated me, told me to get back in and do two laps and get out of the pool. Okay. All right. So, Way to get him over his fear. Right? Right there. Oh, God. Um, I did it, and I forgot all about it. Okay. And only me and my grandfather knew about it. Okay. Yeah, that's that's definitely something you don't tell Bob. So <laughs> anyway, she said, "You've got a lot of closed doors in mind. If I go look around, he says, I don't care. You know, doesn't bother me any." This is why he's an EMT and many other things. And she started went in, and again, I felt the little tickling at the crown chakra. And about three minutes later, she yelled, Oh, shit! Jump back <laughs> and went into a fetal position. And 
I looked at her and said, Helena, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? <coughs> About three minutes of her shaking there on the floor, she she looked at me and said, you've got a fucking dragon inside of you. I was like, okay. Okay. Uh, evidently, I have an ancient silver dragon as a spirit guide, and he waited for her to open up a door, and then he played Jack in the Box. Boom! Oh. The uh, silver dragons have always been known to be well humored. Yes, they have a warped sense of humor. <laughs> okay. And Man, that's how I found out I had a dragon. That's what got me interested in dragon magic. Okay. Wow. Silver dragons have, if I remember right, cones of ice. Mm -hmm. with breath weapons. Okay. There's also a second breath weapon. All the metallics have a yeah. second breath weapon. It's okay. D and D lore. Look it up. Maybe you it, should play it's sometime. D&D &D lore, huh? Okay. <laughs> but just to be to be sure, we are speaking about actual metaphysical dragons, not D&D &D yeah. characters. Where do you think Gary Gygax got the ideas? Actually, I will tell you. Um, no, not just I, Gary Gygax. After I started working with the spirit guide stuff, I, I was very surprised. I'm not sure where Gary Gygax went to, but he yeah, he's the creator of Dungeons and Dragons, correct? Right. I do know a lot of a lot of things he Gary Gygax. I don't play a, D and D. I, I Gary just, Gygax was a voracious a reader of a lot of sci fi and fantasy. Well, I and will he, tell you something. Whatever whatever he was touching on, whatever he was connected to was probably a lot more metaphysical than he would would admit because Elaine, man. Elaine played Dungeons and Dragons from, from the first game it opened up. Oh wow. Really? And she had Almost every book that was printed mm -hmm. on Dungeons Dragons, she had. I hope she kept all of that. Uh, chest load of figures, mm -hmm. um, and she had a big box of dice. Okay. And I was gonna say, I hear my son getting a bit restless. Dennis, do you mind taking over for me, hon? Yes. I have got to go up there. I think it's above Antoinette's pay grade at the moment, which is free. So, yeah. <coughs> All right. I'm going to leave you in Dennis's capable hands. Aquarius, Gemini, have fun. Okay. Yeah, she I does know. this. She'll start the pod. She'll start these live casts and take off in the middle of them. Well. Can you turn it so we can actually get him in here? He, he's been halfway on, halfway I off. I know. I know. Uh, but it's so much more fun this way. Uh -huh. All right, you two. There we go. Yeah, I can turn it back the other way a little bit. You know what? Get up. Yes, you, you. You know what? You're gonna <sighs> you're gonna abandon me to a subject I know almost nothing about, other than when it comes to the D and D aspect of it. Well, this is not a discussion about D and D. And besides, he's our guest. Let him talk. I have I interrupted yet? Come on, guys. Have fun. Have you just saying? Have you just saying? Say, Nara. Say, Nara. Get up here a minute. Right. This here is the couch from hell. Yeah, I know. Believe me, I know. I feel like that's okay. also why I that's also why I sat back here behind uh -huh. the couch. So, so after right. that, um that happened in eighty four, uh in the Air Force when I was in the Air Force. Um Elaine and I became very good friends, and then life happens. Do you know what ever happened with Helene? Oh yes, I know exactly what happened to Helene. Um, Do I want to go there? Well, let's see. My first marriage ended after a Catholic priest told me to quit procrastinating and file for divorce in a moment. Which I did. And then, what was it, a year and a half after that? Uh, well, Helene got out of the Air Force and she refused to go home. She moved in with me after the divorce. And a year after that, we became husband and wife. Oh. She became my best friend. I did not know that either. <laughs> so, um, it so much better if you do it like so. Hey. Right? Sorry, guys. 
Can't turn the phone when live. There we go. Nope. I'm not messing with it. It's good right there. Can you see me? I can see you just fine. See you right there. Yeah, I'm saying, can they see me? Judy, can you see him? I don't know what. Anyways. So, so. Uh, Elaine and I were married and we had three sons. Um, for my first marriage, I had one son. And then in 2000, I was sorry. 2005, uh, Helene died of cancer. Oh, I am so sorry. So, but in, uh, what was it? In 94, in Las Vegas, we moved to Las Vegas after we got out of the airports. I got my EMC license and I did the first Renaissance Fair in Las Vegas at Sunset Park, I became the medic. And at 4 o'clock, I think 4, 4, 3 in the morning, there was a bunch of screaming going on. And somebody yelled, get the first aid kit. And I went to go check out and see what was going on. So one guy had his son sliced open. Oh, fine. And he was holding it with God and says, I'm okay. There's a guy down there that needs you worse than I do. So I ran down and I found a guy in a tent that had been stabbed underneath the left armpit three times with about a, one of the, the nice daggers. And uh, he was white as a sheet. I got him from sitting up, put a trauma pad on him under, on the wound, got him laying down on the injured side so his lung would not collapse. Uh, treated him for shock and helped take care of him until the ambulance got there. Transferred him to the ambulance, transferred... I uh, dealt with the police and dealt with the ambulance people at that night. And then in the morning, I had to deal with his uh, group leader and his family. Um, because of that incident, the group leader happened to be a coven leader. And they offered me a class in Wicca. So it was, I think... August of 84. Okay. No. 94. Okay. 94. I, August 94 is when I started the class in Wickle with their coven. And I learned about that. And through the training in that, I started getting more into, into dragon magic. And that's where I bought the book, DJ Conway Dancing with Dragons, started learning that and there was a bunch of uh, interesting meditations during that period of time. So, and then it just grew from there. So the guy that got stabbed three times, they find out who did it, or the group knew who did it. Um, I don't know who did it. But I guess he just got out of the air or the army with us out of a section eight. And I knew I was going to have trouble with them, with the guys, that's the one I think it is, because he was running around it towards the close of the fair on Friday night, going from one place to another, whatever they had to drink, he was drinking. Yeah, because that's always how a good story starts, right? Yeah, so he was <laughs> drinking whatever he could get, as much as he could, and yeah. Okay, well then. Uh, Any other questions? Um, I'll be honest, I'm not, this might seem like a dumb question. There is no such thing. Oh, I beg to differ. <laughs> but how much, I guess, I mean, yeah, we're not talking Dungeons and Dragons necessarily, but how much truth is there in that? I mean, I get it, it's a game and everything like that, but how much knowledge would you actually glean from all of those? Dungeons and Dragons, D and D, just like the movie um, Avalon, the creators of both did not have supposedly any knowledge of metaphysics or the uh, magical zealots or all this other stuff. But yet, a lot of the information they give, a lot of the information 
to this show is fairly accurate to some extent. Okay. I, so if I ever if I'm walking in a green if I'm walking in a forest, I come across a green dragon, I'm pretty much dead. Not necessarily. No. See the thing that, that like I said before, a dragon, unless you're hunting it, unless you're trying to cause problems with it, most of the dragons that I've come in contact with, or that I've dealt with, will not harm, will, or will right. not do harm unless done harm, I'm done harm too. If you're, like I said, unless they're pushing the corner, because they know their power, their abilities, and their skills, they would try to rhyme, reason, or hide. But if you put them in a corner, they're going to do everything they can to survive. Right. Less anybody else would. So, okay. Um, do you have any advice? Um, if you're interested in dragon magic, if you can find the book Dancing with Dragons, that was a good read. Um, I don't know if it's still available. The yeah. second book that she put out is more of the actual training for the Five Rings and, the, and her dragon magic system. Um, if you do meditations and you, if you think you have a drag contact, a connection with dragons, try doing a meditation. If you can't do a, your a self meditation, get somebody to do a, a guided meditation and put you through the meditation in order to try to meet your spirit guide to see if it is a dragon or what. Um, wow. Sorry, my neck's so. Hurt. I'm trying to think what else. Uh, if you have any questions I'll help it if I can are there um, any questions in the uh, amongst our viewers I don't know if um, I mean there's thousands of different ways to get into dragon magic it's not just from a book like I said if you have a if you have a connection with dragons and you do a meditation or a guided meditation and make contact with the dragon as I did with grandpa that's what I refer to my silver dragon as grandpa He's an angel silver, so it's out of respect. But he will, they will guide you. They will give you little bits of knowledge and stuff. Example, when I first met Felicia and her father, Felicia, they, Felicia and her father, and Lori. You mean Alicia? Alicia. Excuse me. Alicia, anyway... <laughs> They wanted me to do readings at Adventureland Psyche Fair that they were setting up. So I went out to do readings, and there was some very, um, I guess, how do we say it? They were more celebrity readers there and things of this nature. And they didn't have a very good show out on the Friday night and Saturday that was going on. So these high-priced, more famous le uh, readers wanted to have a meeting with Jeff and uh, Lori to determine why. You know, what was, the, what was the advertising and all this other stuff. And so I was called to the meeting. I sat down. And they started asking questions. And I had to get up and leave real quick. The voice that came in my head was Grandpa, and he says, if these guys are such good readers, how come the hell they didn't know this was going to happen in the first place? <laughs> I just had to get up. I was, by the time I got out of the door, I was laughing my ass off, because <laughs> that's the dragon sense of humor. So, take us for what it's worth. Okay. Does anybody, does anybody out there have any questions for Mike? Mr. Bales. Let's say we do have um, the only question so far is Mark Smart asked a question from earlier. And so, and 
I hope the uh, thing's still running. Oh, it's still running. I can see it's still running. The number keeps going up and down here. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I personally don't have any other questions that, that I can... I can think, I'll probably think of a hundred questions after yeah. I turn this off. That's usually the way it works. I will say if anybody wants to contact me uh, for yes, personal would... readings or um, information or just to sit and talk and chat, I'm welcome to that. Um, Alicia has my contact information. Alicia. Alicia. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, Alicia. Alicia. <laughs> <laughs> Alicia, Alicia, yeah, that's my own tongue. Anyway, Alicia has my information, and you can get a hold of me through her. Uh, my, I do have an email at Draco D R A K O W R K A N Draco Working at yahoo.com if you want to reach out to me. Um, other than that, oh hey. No, no. Yeah, turn, I'm turning this back up. If you have dragon guides, do you have a recommendation on how to communicate with them better? Um, there's the meditation part. Through meditation, so, the camera's right there. Meditation is one of the best ways to get a dialogue started with them. But remember, they also talk with symbols, they talk with riddles and rhymes. Um, they uh, very seldom will give you a straight yes or no or, or information unless you've been working with them for a while. Uh, they do have a lot of smart ox comments at times. Um, and you will get advice from them. A lot of times, if it's a feeling you get, uh, like your intuition, that uh, they kind of use those tools as well. But to communicate with them, I say do guided meditation or meditation and ask if they're willing to communicate with you better. And then just sit and be still and listen. In order for them to talk to you, you have to listen and be able to hear them. A lot of people have too much uh, noise in their head to hear what they're trying to say. So, I would say meditation is one of the best ways to do it. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions out there, folks? I will say this. If anybody wants me to do a guided meditation for them, I can do that. We can actually probably schedule one at the store. Um, sure. Yeah, keep, why, why don't we do that? Keep an eye out, folks. Um, I, I have, we have to consult the schedules and stuff like that. You know, adulting, right? Um, <laughs> anyways. Yeah, we can, if anybody's interested, we can certainly set up a guided meditation. Um at the store later this month. Otherwise, um, and so I'm not seeing any other questions at the moment. But that's the thing with Facebook Live. And it, you know, yeah. Somebody might have sent a question two minutes ago and we haven't seen it yet. Um, anyways. Um, so, I, I personally can't think of anything else. Is there anything else you might want to divulge before we go ahead and end this? Like I said before, Dragon Magic is, is um, unique. It does elemental. It does dimensional. And when you get into it, dragons do transcend the dimensional plane. So therefore, you also get to work with the uh, galactic and multidimensional energies. Um... So, but they are very picky, I guess, because you are tested uh, a lot and you, they don't want somebody who's going to misuse the energies and powers that they have uh, because of the damage it can cause. 
<clears throat> so, all right. Who is it? No, it's Nicole replying to your answer. I guess she gets snorts, eye rolls, and head shakes mostly. Well, if Nicole, if you want me to give you guided meditation, I'll be happy to do it. So, Nicole's at the shop regularly. So, all right. Otherwise, folks, thank you for tuning in for another Tuesday night talk. Check back with us next week. And until then, have a good night. Peace be with you.